Uh, first off, your reaction to these events unfolding overnight? They're going to happen again and again and again. As long as the mullahs, the Ayatollah, are in charge of Iran, the war in Gaza will never end, the war in the north in Lebanon will never end, the war in Yemen would ever end. The only solution to this is regime change. There must be, there must be a change of regime and a return to an Iran which is democratic. 70% of Iranians want regime change. 90% of Arab states in the region want regime change. Israel wants regime change. America is standing in the way of regime change. That's the only solution. Otherwise, this happens again and again and again, because Iran loses nothing. Iran goes to the bank with its oil revenues, sends out its surrogates, Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and this is just another day uh, for Iran. So, yeah, it was a defeat in the sense that Israel was able to repel the attack, but it's not going to deter them. They're going to do it again and again and again. This is an opportunity for regime change. This was a provocation. You know, this wasn't a response to an attack on a consulate. First, it wasn't a consulate. Right. Well, Iran attacked, attacked the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires. The highest court in Argentina on Thursday ruled after hearing evidence that that was an Iranian attack on the Israeli embassy, not consulate, embassy. Mm -hmm. 23 people were killed. So Israel had a perfect, perfect justification for going after a military base disguised as a consulate. And this can't end simply with a draw, with a tie. There has to be regime change one way or another. And there has to be a destruction of Iran's uh, nuclear arsenal. Otherwise, this is going to happen, but with but, nuclear but, weapons behind it. And this is a warning. And I don't think the United States is taking the world community, certainly, is not taking this warning seriously. Professor, and you talk about that regime change, but what does that look like and how would that be carried out? It would be carried out through an attack by Israel and the United States on the nuclear arsenal, the nuclear facilities of Iran, which are aimed at Israel. And Iran has said they would attack Israel. Israel is a one-bomb state. Israel is the perfect right and justification to go after the Iranian uh, uh, nuclear arsenal. And if it did, the people of Iran would probably rise up. Seventy percent of Iranians are opposed to the regime. I had dinner the other night with the Shah's son, the crown prince of Iran, the man who would turn Iran into a democracy mm -hmm. if the people of Iran were allowed to vote and return the Shah's family to the rule. Uh, but it's not going to happen if the United States maintains its pressure on Israel not to respond. That's a serious tactical mistake that will guarantee repetition of last night's report, but with much more lethal responses. Already one Israeli died, a seven-year-old Bedouin girl was killed by mm -hmm. Iran. Yes, it was a shrapnel that killed her, but it was in response to the Iranian attack. And uh, Israel has to increase its deterrent message to Iran. Right now, Iran is saying, look, you know, we tried. You know, they stopped us, but we'll try again. We didn't lose anything. What did they lose? They lost 300 drones. They have thousands and thousands of them. Right. So the to Iran has not been sent or received, and we will see a recurrence over and over and over again. This is a narrative that Iran loves. It sends its surrogates. They kill 1,200 Israelis, capture 250 Israelis. The world turns against Israel when Israel retaliates. Iran wins. Hezbollah wins. Hamas wins. The Houthis win. Israel loses and the United States loses and peace loses. This is not a prescription for peace. So we do know that the Israeli War Cabinet, they're meeting right now at this hour to figure out what the next steps are. You mentioned that they have to hit back in order to defend itself. Um, but there's that fear of this, this war escalating in, into a wider scale war. Uh, and and you have... talk about that regime change. So if they hit back, uh, isn't there that potential that this could uh, get even more dire and more severe? What's your thoughts? No, exactly the opposite. The, all the Arab countries in the region would support Israel. They wouldn't do it openly, but they would support Israel. This would not widen the war. This would prevent future widening of the war. You know, sometimes taking preventive action is necessary. The world learned 
uh, by the failure of England and, and, and France to take action against the Nazi regime in the 1930s. In 1935, they could have defeated them and saved 50 million lives. Mm -hmm. But instead, they sat back and allowed the Nazi regime to become stronger and stronger until it was ready to attack Poland and Czechoslovakia. Uh, we should learn from that mistake. So President this Biden has said that he, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but President Biden has said that he's not going to support an offensive here with Israel. Um, right. But to your point, you're saying that the U.S. should, are you saying that they should get involved in that way to eliminate this regime? No, they should not stop Israel from doing it. Uh, if Yes, they should cooperate with Israel. It's in the interest of America to end the Ayatollah's rule. Regime change is absolutely essential. John Bolton, who was the former national security advisor under the Trump administration, uh, says that. He's 100 percent correct. Um, and I think other uh, experts uh, on international warfare First of all, let me be very clear, as an expert in international law, mm -hmm. it would be entirely justified for Israel and for the United States to take offensive action against Iran. Iran has declared war against Israel. Iran has killed many Americans, including hundreds in a marine base uh, back in the day. And it's a completely justified legal attack on Iran. And it would do a great deal of good for the world peace. It would end Hamas. It would end Hezbollah. It would end the Houthis. These are the tentacles of the octopus. But the head of the octopus is sitting and laughing in Tehran, saying, hey, we do whatever we want. You know, there's no retaliation. The United States is going to pressure Israel into just accepting a tie. A tie is not good enough because Iran will figure out opportunities and times to attack again. Yeah. If not for Iran, Israel would never have been attacked on October 7th. Right. And never would have been attacked in other instances. And so I know the Israelis would like to see regime change, and they shouldn't be stopped from trying to bring that about. There was an opportunity back in the, back in the Obama administration to help an indigenous uprising in Iran, but the United States stood back and didn't help. And the result is a new Nazi regime in the Middle East called Iran, and they're going to continue to make it impossible for Israel, for the United States, for the Arab neighbors to live in peace. The world right. needs regime change. And this is an opportunity to bring it about because any attack on Iran would now be justified after 300 missiles were directed at Israel. All right, Professor Alan Dershowitz, thank you so much. We'll wait to see what comes from this.